The main form of targeting for a dynamic search ad campaign will be dynamic ad targets. Instead of using keywords, Google likes to use the content that's on your website or landing pages and try to match it to similar search queries that someone is typing into Google.com. This video is going to show you what those dynamic ad targets are and where you can find them within Google Ads. Advertisers can get as specific as telling Google, hey, only try to get in front of users who are maybe looking for something similar to this content on these few pages. That's pretty specific. Or you can get as broad as targeting every single page on your website. It's totally up to you. So we're going to show you how specific you can get with dynamic ad targets and where this feature lives within Google Ads so you can either create new dynamic ad targets or edit your current ones later on. As I just stated in the intro, dynamic ad targets are going to be part of dynamic search ad campaigns. The first way for me to show you where dynamic ad targets could live would be in the dynamic search ad campaign creation process. So that's the one we're going to cover first but I'm not going to go through every single detail of a dynamic search ad campaign because we already have a video covering that and you can check that one out here. So let's head on over to the blue plus button and then choose new campaign. Next, you will want to pick one of the campaign objectives that will allow you to create a search campaign. I'll just choose leads, figure out whatever goals you want, but I'm going to click continue. And there we can choose the campaign type of search. Select the ways you want to reach your goal, name your campaign, and then we can continue. I'm going to skip the bidding section and just head to campaign settings. Choose all the settings that you want, but then we need to head down to more settings. Let's click on this. And if we scroll down again, the last option will be dynamic search ads setting. So let's open this one up. Here is where you will be able to start choosing how you want to target your DSA campaign. First, you will want to enter your website. Next, you can choose your language. But once we get down to the bottom portion, you can start selecting which URLs you want to use for your dynamic search ads. The first option, and the one that is automatically selected, is to use all URLs Google knows about the website. We just gave Google the website up above. So for this dynamic search ads campaign, I'm telling Google, use any page that lives under the payminipros.com domain. This would include the home page, the about us page, all of our blogs. It would even include our privacy policy page. So you can see when you include everything before you add exclusions, you might be letting Google target users searching for content on pages that you really don't want them to land on. So to get a little bit more specific, you can choose to use only URLs from page feeds. So then if I scroll down a little bit, we already have a few DSA page feeds selected. If you're looking to create your own page feeds, you can head on up to tools and settings and then under setup, you will want to open business data. We have another video about DSA page feed setup. You can check that one out here. So I'm not going to go through all the ins and outs of it, but for now, we're just going to view one of them. Let's do the first one. Notice in our page feed, we have a list of URLs and then custom labels for each of the URLs. Ignore this part. I just made up some URLs for the sake of that older video. So this DSA page feed, even though I'm not recommending to target these types of URLs, but it has six URLs in the page feed. I'm going to leave this page open, hop back into the campaign creation, if I choose to target the DSA page feed that we just looked at, my search ads will only target those six URLs I have added to that particular page feed. If I want to do two at once, depending on how you're breaking out your URLs, then it will target whatever URLs are within both of those feeds. I'm not even going to look at the second one. So we already covered targeting any URL that's available and can be found on your website and then how we can use page feeds. For the sake of this video, I'm going to unselect the page feed and then head back up to use all URLs. This is going to be to show you the next part. So for now, I'm going to click next. And here we see our dynamic ad targets when creating the ad group. And what you see here will depend on what you've selected within your campaign settings, either choosing from a page feed or selecting all URLs. So now let's walk through each of the dynamic ad targets that we can create within the ad group. The first option we see here is categories recommended for your website. These categories are automatically created by Google based upon your website content. Most likely in our case, Google looked at the blogs that we do have on our website and they came up with certain themes. There's Facebook overall, Facebook business manager, just Facebook ads, blogs about pixels, blog about Google ads. So if I choose one of the categories, Right now, this ad group would be targeting any URL on my website, but just the ones that Google has categorized as being about Facebook ads. Let's say we already had a page feed 
that grouped all of our Facebook ads URLs together, then I would be okay just choosing the page feed for the campaign and then within the ad group target all pages because it's only gonna look at the page feed. Well, if I do it this way, where all pages set at the campaign level and then choosing this specific dynamic ad target of category, I won't have to go back and constantly update my page feed. Every time Google can identify a page that should be categorized as Facebook ads, it'll automatically be included within my dynamic search ad campaign. Let me remove this one. I'll just scroll down one one more time before we keep moving so you can see what type of categories that Google has created. We see the search volume and then you can get a preview of what one of your ads might look like as well as the specific landing page. So as I assumed, yes, it's mostly from our blog set. Next, you can start looking at specific web pages and these are going to have a few options. The first option to target specific web pages would be to add in the specific URLs. You can see you can paste the list but you have to have one URL per line. I'm just going to grab a few really quick. There we go, I just pasted in two blogs. If I click add, I'm telling Google to just target these URLs. If I found out I had a typo, let's say I was typing this whole thing in myself, I can click edit, edit the URL, and this could be important to know in case your URLs do change on your website, and then you just click update, or to get rid of them, you can just X out of each one. Instead of using exact URLs, you could create rules to target specific web pages. Sorry for the view change, I had to zoom out a little bit, otherwise you couldn't see what I'm typing in here. So as I said, I wanted to choose every blog on my site so I don't have to update my page feed. I can just create this rule if the URL contains blog and then add it, and then we'll be targeting every blog on my site. What if I change my mind? I don't want every blog. If I edit it, here's the and condition. Now my rules are saying, if I click update, the URL contains blog and the URL must contain LinkedIn. Pretty much just the blogs about LinkedIn ads that we have on the site. There's no or condition. You can see after we add another one, we can continue to add as many URL contains rules as we want. Really don't need the or functionality because that is the default option. X out of this one, besides URL, you can look at the content on the page. And that's essentially what Google does to match your DSA ads with what the user is searching for. Google looks at the content. So in this case, only use the pages on my entire website that contain the word pixel on it. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna leave that one there and just continue to add more. Another option is by page title. If the page title contains certain words, I honestly don't know if capitalization makes a difference. I'm gonna assume it doesn't, but please let me know if I'm wrong. And if you're not sure by what we mean with page title, let me show you. I'm not gonna expand it any further. We don't need to, but this is your page title and you can customize these page titles to be whatever you want. And if you're really, really new in digital marketing, your page title is what's typically shown within the search results, the main link that user will click on organically. If I hover over the tab, you saw that it expanded and we could see the page title that we have for this page is the title of the blog. And there we see in the page title, it starts off with Google ads. And a lot of our blogs have Google ads within the page title. So then it's clear, we're telling Google any page on our website that has Google ads in the title, we wanna use that to target for our DSA campaign. If I change page title to category, you can start looking at selecting a specific category. And there you pretty much see it's the option that we had above. Nothing different there. So I'm gonna X out of this, and then we can look at the all pages option. And this one is pretty straightforward. Target all web pages within my website. And since the campaign level also chose all pages on the website, we are straight up telling Google, use any page that can be found on my website and match it to user search queries that relate to the content on those pages. So yes, this is gonna cast the widest net. So remember, as I already warned you, any page that could be found like your privacy policy pages, maybe terms and conditions, those sort of things that might not be the best landing pages and you might not get conversions from those pages, consider adding those as exclusions later on and we'll show you how. Now if I head back up to my data feed, I do wanna call out this option. Remember I had custom labels within the data feed and we're using the data feed of DSA page feed. So I'm gonna jump back in my campaign settings, which means I have to backtrack a little bit, head back down to my dynamic search ad settings, choose the right page feed, let's go back to the ad group, because if you choose to target your DSA campaign with a page feed, we will get a different dynamic ad target. And that is targeting by the label that you used within the page feed. And one of the labels was videos. Yes, it was part of the made up URLs we added for the feed. Let's say you have a long list of URLs at the campaign level, you can then break out your ad groups based upon specific labels within that feed. So you don't have to lump all of the URLs from the feed within one ad group. Still gives you a little bit more control. I'm always down with breaking out my ad groups in very specific themes. If it has the volume where that decision makes sense. So from the feed side, we lose the category stuff. We lose the main category option, but we still can target by specific web pages, 
looking just at URLs and the rules that we went over, the URL contains, page content, the page feed, the page title, and then the all web pages. And again, that is all web pages just from the DSA page feed we selected, not all pages on your website. So remember your ad group dynamic ad targets will work within whatever you have chosen at the campaign level. All right, for now, I'm gonna head back to my main campaign screen. And next I wanna talk about where to find your dynamic targets after your campaigns and ad groups are already live. And the view might be a little bit different. In most of my accounts, since we do use DSA a lot, dynamic ad targets will show up towards the bottom in suggested. If you don't use it a lot or it's fairly new within your account, you may have to click on show more to find the dynamic ad targets section. But if you click on the arrow to expand it, there you can click on dynamic ad targets to review everything. Again, these are all fake ones that we create for the sake of these videos. Within this section, if you click on the blue plus button, remember I'm in the all campaign view. This is a lot easier if you just jump into the specific ad group right away. You can choose the ad group and then I can start adding additional ad targets if I want to. In this case, I don't, so I'm just gonna cancel out of it. I did promise to show you where you can add negative dynamic ad targets. Think of these as exclusions within your targeting. If I jump back up to the page feed again, this particular page feed had options for exclude, something that we recommend if you don't wanna do it manually. Either keep a feed of just URLs you wanna exclude, or make sure you use custom labels within one of your feeds if you just plan on using one. So in this case, we never want people to land on a privacy policy page. We never want people to find our sitemap. So we labeled it with DSA underscore exclude. If we go back up here, think of these as targeting exclusion options. So we went up, clicked on the blue plus button. Since I'm in the campaign level view, I can add it at the campaign level or choose a specific ad group. In this case, I never want anyone to visit privacy policy or sitemap page, so I'm gonna keep it at the campaign level. I would then choose the campaign. You can exclude by exact URLs, create the same type of rules that we use for targeting. There's a URL, there's custom labels and everything, and that is the option I use to exclude any page from the feed that has the custom label DSA underscore exclude, but you can also do the variety of options that we talked about for targeting, and then you would save it. I highly recommend that you use negative dynamic ad targets if you're doing anything regarding all pages. Then even if you are getting more specific either with page feeds or other specific rules, you will be able to look at the search terms, whatever Google still shows us, of what's coming in based upon your targeting. You'll get a sense of what potential junk could be coming in and then give you different ideas of what you may also want to exclude to try to keep your dynamic search ad campaigns as specific as possible. And as of now, those are the dynamic ad target options we get for our dynamic search ad campaigns. The options are pretty straightforward and you can get fairly specific. Just understand that what you're choosing will live under the rules that you've set at the campaign setting level. We already shared the video link earlier if you wanna learn more about DSA campaigns as well as DSA strategy. So again, check that one out. But if you have any additional questions on how we use dynamic ad targets or how they work, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.